Hello, my name is Dirk Fischer from Hilscher and I want to explain flash memory layouts of different NetX90 use cases in this tutorial. Let's have a look on the block diagram first to check where flash memory is located actually. So as you might know we have a dedicated communication site with one megabyte of flash for the, the communication purposes and we have another 512 kilobyte of flash for the application side which can be used for the application user application in addition it's possible to connect external memory through this sqi interface and this memory can be used either by the communication or the application side so when it is necessary to connect external memory when is the internal memory sufficient? This depends on the used firmware, of course. Hilsche offers different types of firmware. Uh, in this table you get an overview and firmware type number one is legacy field buses like Profibus, CanOpen, DeviceNet, where we do not need external memory. Same is true for standard real-time Ethernet based protocols. Um, the firmware is small enough to fit into the internal flash, no external memory required. Now if you add more functionality, more sophisticated functionality like a web server or even IIoT functionality, MQTT, OPC UA, in these cases we need SQI flash and SDRAM in addition to the internal memories. Um, and the layout of the flash memory is um, structured in, in to these different use cases. We call these flash layout use cases A, B and C. And that's uh, the main topic of this tutorial to explain these use cases in more detail. Um, before we do this, let's ha have a look onto the, the flash blocks which are available. So we have here the green block is uh, used for the application and we do not distinguish if this is located inside NetX90 or if we use an external host microcontroller. Um, the firmware from Hilsche do not care, it's, it's not, not really important. Um, therefore we want to concentrate on these blue colored flash blocks here. We want to concentrate on the internal flash for the communication side and optionally the external SQI flash used by the communication firmware. Um, let's start with this with this use case. Um, just internal flash memories are used. So that's use case A and B. Um, and we will zoom into this block diagram and have a closer look into these two flash blocks. Um, yeah, here you can see in flash 0 and flash 1. Both are dedicated to the communication side. And that's the layout uh, which has to be prepared during production time. So before you deliver this, this product to your customers, to the end users, you have to program these content into the memory. The, the location of these blocks is fixed, so we have um, specified addresses and uh, also fixed sizes of these different blocks here. At address 0, at the very bottom of inflash 0, we store the hardware configuration file. In our development tools, these binary files has a, have the suffix hwc and they are always 8 kilobyte of size. They hold information about the pinning, about SDRAM parameters, about the host interface configuration and so on. The next block is just 4 kilobyte of size and it's called flash device label, file suffix FDL. This is a configuration block for the firmware, for the software, and it contain individual unique data for each device like MAC addresses or serial numbers. So that means in your production you have to create individual FDLs for each device. 
And then the remaining area in InFlash0 is used to store the actual firmware. We call this LFW, loadable firmware. And the suffix of our LFW files is NXI. This is a binary you get from us and it's, it contains the protocol stack. Profinet, Ethercat, Ethernet IP, etc. The second flash block is used to store a kind of bootloader maintenance firmware. The maintenance firmware is responsible to install new firmware, to update the firmware. Yeah, it's kind of, um, yeah, as, as, as the name said, it's maintenance firmware and not used during normal operation, but only in special cases when you want to update the firmware. The maintenance firmware has, it, has its own hardware configuration and both blocks are stored at the, quite at the end of the inflash one. The maintenance firmware can be started from the application. So the application can control um, the communication side if the normal operation firmware shall be started or alternatively the maintenance firmware shall be started. Um, so what, what's uh, about the rest of the flash? Uh, we use a 40 kilobyte block at the end to store remnant data. So the user is not responsible to, to handle this. This memory area is controlled by the firmware itself. So the firmware will store data here um, without user interaction. But we still have a big block here available and this can be used for the firmware update. We call this update area and this area store a new LFW or a new application firmware yeah, with a suffix NXI or NII. Um, that means by, by any but by some mechanisms you can store a new firmware here and the maintenance firmware then will install this firmware to the actual position of the firmware inside inflash0 or onto inflash2 for the application side. Um, how this new firmware is, is um, stored here, this is not part of this tutorial, this will be discussed uh, in, a, in a different tutorial. Okay, that, that's how the flash is used in use flash layout use case A, where we do not use external um, flash memory. Um, in the next slide I want to explain use case C. You remember use case C is used for the more sophisticated firmware where we have web server functionality or MQTT OPC UA uh, stacks in addition to the real-time Ethernet and we need external memory like shown in this block diagram. Yeah. Now we have an additional block outside NetX90. Yeah. The content of in flash 0 and 1 is quite similar. We also have a hardware config, we have flash device label, we have the maintenance firmware which can be a little bit bigger in this case. Um, the main difference is we do not use this area here for the, the update area. The update area is shifted into the external flash and here we use a file system. Yeah. The inflashes are not structured as a file system but in the external flash this is a case. Um, the advantage of this scenario is we have more space here for the update area. So it's possible to store not just one single NXI or NAI file, but we can store a SIP archive and the SIP archive can contain both of these files. And even more, it's possible to store several NXI files. So, for example, Profinet, Ethercat and Ethernet IP protocol stack firmware in parallel. And as I explained before, the application side can trigger the update process, the installation, and through a parameter, the application side can select which of these options shall be installed here. 
Um, the rest of the external flash um, can be used to store web content, for example, or other user data. Therefore, we call, this is a green colored block. So the application side can also store data here. But the whole flash is controlled by the application, uh, by the communication side. Sorry, not the application side. The update mechanism is exactly the same. The maintenance firmware will take the data from the external flash and will install it to the internal flash. The last use case to be discussed is use case B, flash layout use case B. And in this use case, the external flash memory is under control of the application side. So that's a big difference between use case um, C and B. Um, the application side will control the flash content, not the com side. Um, and we use, uh, we have the same advantage as in use case C. We can use um, a bigger update area to store several variants of different um, NXI, NII combinations. Um, but the communication side firmware itself does not require external memory. Like this, like it is for IoT protocols, use case C. So basically use case A and B from the communication side firmware is very similar. Um, the only difference is the update area is outside. In this case, the application firmware must store the data here. So that's a summary, use case A, B, C. Use case A, we don't have external memory, we just use internal one. The update area is inside in flash one. Use case B, we have external memory, but this is controlled by the application. And use case C, the external memory is controlled by the communication side. How to distinguish these use cases? So, for example, the maintenance firmware must know about the use case. And this information is stored in the flash device label. So the flash device label contain information about the location of the update area and the available memory blocks. Yeah, so that means for each use case, you have to program individual flash device labels into the memory to distinguish ABC. Our Netic Studio IDE contains an editor for flash device label files. So here we have three different variants, flash device label for use case A, B, C. And this is the content of this flash device label. And you see we have a flash layout section with the different areas inside, inside the flash. So you can edit here or at least view it. Okay, last comment from my side, documentation. You find this information about flash layout and firmware update mechanism in our production guide for Netix 90. And please visit kb.hilcher.com, um, our knowledge base, where you find a documentation section um, and um, all relevant documentation about Netix 90. So thank you very much. And please visit our other tutorials to, to get more information about Netix 90.